When you snap a photo, your camera is measuring light. The sensor detects particles of light, called photons, that bounce off the object you're taking a photo of. So when we heard that scientists had made pictures with light that's never measured, it seemed impossible. But of course it's not impossible, it's just quantum physics. The researchers wanted to know what information they could get on a photon without detecting it. So they created twin pairs of photons that are indistinguishable to see if they could get one twin to interact with an object and this interaction be seen in the other. Puzzled? Here's Lizzie Gibney talking to author Gabriella Bajetto Lemos from the Institute of Quantum Optics in Vienna, Austria. So in general, to take an image of an object, one illuminates it with light and the camera detects exactly that light, but that after it interacted with the object. So talk me through your experiment then. Here you somehow point the camera away from the object, but still get an image. How, how does it work? We use a concept of twin photons, which are photons that are born together and they share uh, many properties. And what we do is illuminate the object with one of the photons from a pair. And instead of collecting the light that's scattered from that object, we collect the light from the other photon, which is the sister of the photon that interacted with the object. So even though it doesn't pass through the object because it's twin did, it has some kind of imprint? Yes. Because they're twins, they, they, even though they, they later they separate and each one goes one way, and they continue sharing um, information. And this information can be accessed by both of them together or either one. And so what does it look like, this image that we produce? How exactly do we go about then uh, reproducing the object? We have one pair of photons that is created in two different places. So I have two crystals. Either can create a pair of photons. And as long as I don't know which crystal created the pair of photons, we can say in quantum mechanics that it's effectively as if both had created the the pair of photons, the the same pair. So in terms of, of, of the experiment, it's as if one pair of photons could have taken two different parts. And as long as we don't know which part, when we, we put these two parts together, then these photons add or subtract. So it's if they could, when they come together, you can see two humps, for example, they would add and you have a bigger hump. Or if you get two humps and you subtract them, you get zero. So this only happens as long as I don't know which part the photon actually came from. You're effectively seeing the result of it having gone down both paths it's in the weird quantum mechanical way. Yeah, so in quantum mechanics we say if we don't know which path it came down, it must have come down through both paths. So in this case, when, it, when we have two paths that are joined and they are indistinguishable in the sense that we have no idea if a photon came down one of them or the other, then these, um, these paths effectively sum or subtract. And that's the image that you get. And that's the image that we get. The photons that actually do pass through the object, you just chuck away. But how can you definitively prove that they they haven't somehow got into your camera, into your detector? How do we know for sure that it's not those ones that we're seeing? What we did was to use two completely different colours for the photon that went through the object and the photon that was detected. And we did this so that the photon that went through the object couldn't be detected by our camera because our camera is insensitive to it. In fact, this is a photon in what we call telecommunications wavelength and our cameras just can't see it or infrared wavelength. On the other hand, the photon that we do detect does not go through one of the objects, for example. It, it, so the object is opaque to this, to this color. So we know that this photon couldn't have gone through the object. And on the other hand, the camera doesn't see the photons that can go through the object. And so what kinds of things can you image with this technique? We had a cardboard cutout that we imaged. The cardboard acts as a sort of detector and then we have information as to which path a photon came through. So you get a kind of silhouette, I suppose. And what was was the silhouette? It was a cat. (laughs) So we had a cardboard cutout in which we had the cat and the body was cut out of the cardboard such that this was to remind us to make a reference to Schrodinger's cat. And this is because 
this experiment brings out the same idea of Schrodinger's uh, paradox is that you have a, a cat in a box and there's, there's some poison that could have been released or not. So you don't know if the cat is dead or alive before you open the box. So before you open the box, the cat is effectively dead and alive. Here it's the same idea. Mm, and, and in the photo on that, it's gone down both routes. It's both gone through the object and it hasn't. And, and why would you want to do that? Why is it particularly useful for biological samples? Well, because um, in general, uh, in many cases in, um, in, in biological imaging, one wants um, photons which have very low energy. And these are exactly the photons that are difficult to detect because cameras... Um, in general, can't see low light at these wavelengths or these colors. And we think that if we play around with it enough, we can find a way to use this photon that interacted with this object but isn't detected. So if I only detect it twin and don't, don't destroy this photon that interacted with the object, can I use it later for something else, for example, instead of just discarding it? Gabriella Bejeso Lemos there. The paper is at nature.com/nature and the image they made is on our Twitter feed at naturepodcast.